30 years, uh, first I was mostly focused on being a journalist and a writer. But for 30 years, I've also been involved in the nonprofit sector, the Samaj sector, just like all of you. Uh, there was a time when I was young as the youngest of you, it seems very long ago, but I think even today we all share the same enthusiasm to become change agents and see the word agent came back. So agent, agency, I think it's a lot about change, about making something better than it is where we are standing and watching from, right? Hello everyone, welcome to the Celebration Podcast. On this program, we meet thought leaders and development sector experts who share their incisive insights and pivotal experiences to help our listeners unbundle and understand complex developmental concepts. Celebration is a co-learning series hosted by Siksha Lokam in collaboration with the Societal Platform team. My name is Kushpu. And the subject of today's discussion is restoring agency. Hope you're all set. Let's stimulate and flex our intellectual cerebral muscles. Agency is such a fundamental construct. It is the capacity of any individual like you and I to make free choices and to exercise our ability to act in a given situation. Yet, so often around us, we see people feel hesitant to exercise their agency. Why does this happen? Can agency be restored? Are there barriers that need to be overcome? To explore these questions, on today's episode, we speak to our expert Rohini Nilekani. is a serial social entrepreneur. From co-founding Argyam to Akshara Foundation to Pratham Books to Step Foundation, Rohini deeply believes in the power of civil society organizations in shaping the world around us. She is also an evangelist and the guiding force behind the societal platform thinking. An inspiring philanthropist, a thought-provoking writer, a renowned speaker, Rohini barely needs an introduction. I personally see and regard her as someone bold and deeply strategic in thinking and creative and compassionate at heart. And since I've seen and heard her interact with the team, I can say this with absolute confidence that she's extremely witty, on her feet and approachable in demeanor. Roini, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the episode. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction, Kushbu. Namaste, everybody. Very happy to be with all of you. Rohini, for over three decades, you have worked on restoring agency of some of the most oppressed and marginalized people in the society. I'm curious to understand how do you define agency? All of us come here because we say something is not right. Something should be different. And we want to participate in that change in whichever way we can. Otherwise, all of you could have taken different careers, right? You felt the need to be part of making some change. And so you already took the agency. You made that choice to help create social change in whichever way you can. And uh, thankfully for us, you landed up in Shiksha Lokam. So first of all, I thank you for choosing to take that agency to do this work. I too, from the beginning was always interested, even as a child, uh, it must be a personality type uh, that I always wanted to try and change things for the better. Now, if you are young and full of that superior moral energy, you can be very irritating. Let me tell you to other people, because I should glare at people and pick up the garbage with the true doubt, which is not a good way to take agency to make change. And I learned that you had to be much more 
you have to be less judgmental because other people also want agency or not agency is not just about me taking agency but enabling everybody else also to have positive agency so over time when i was young i learned and as i helped to start different institutions starting first with nagrik in 1992 one of my dear friends had died in a horrendous uh traffic accident quite unnecessary death and i began as a journalist to research why do we have so many road accidents uh in india we are number one in the world 160000 unnecessary deaths on our roads every single year and i set up something called nagrik to help citizens to participate in making our roads better and from there till today all the institutions have been with i realized something and created a theoretical framework for myself ki in the continuum of samaj bazaar and sarkar that is society bazaar is markets and sarkar of course is government it is a continuum they all have to they are all on the same line but samaj is very important in my work samaj means who we are all samaj you are all samaj even people in government and people in markets they are also samaj when they come home they don't wear some crown on their heads say i am market i am sarkar they are all people like you and me so samaj is at the base is the foundation is the knee which the aadhar is the first sector because samaj needed to get better and better and people tend to fight with each other we need systems otherwise we just get lost in our own narrowness we created for ourselves we created bazaar we created sarkar so that samaj could become more and more empathetic more and more efficient so for me samaj is the sector in which all my philanthropy and work has played out in my life even my writing comes from that focus why because i think it is society that can enable better societies all of us want to live in a better society that's why you have come to do the work that you do and samaj if it is strengthened then we can be the best of our human selves all of us together that and my theory of change is the more we work on samaj institutions the more we help set up good work like shiksha lokam the more we find good moral leaders like you as young as you are catch them young the more you will find innovate your way through all the problems and every solution comes there will always be problems but there will always be solution seekers in the samaj who take the agency to solve those problems best as they can that's where all my hope for my work comes from and agency is very tied to that idea okay so interesting to hear about these three actors the samaj the sarkar and the bazaar and how they operate in a continuum to shape our world rohini explained how strengthening samaj can align both the sarkar and the bazaar to our collective purpose of shaping a better and a much more empathetic society where all of us are a better version of ourselves next Rohini explains how the idea of restoring agency is so key to the role of samaj. What does it mean to distribute the agency and how transformative can it be? Because uh, agency when you take it your perspective changes from being helpless helpless hopeless from being someone who can't do anything you become someone who wants to do something even if it is way out of your comfort zone and it's not fair to tell the person at the very end of the pipe are kya kar rahe ho take your agency no that's not what we mean we have to take the agency to distribute agency agency doesn't come very easily to those who are the most exploited the most vulnerable what we have to do is help change the system around people so that they are at least in a position to take that agency we try to do that in some way say in akshara foundation in education in akshara pratham pratham books and now ek step in the education sector which you are also involved in he how can we make everybody feel part of this societal mission to make sure that every child can learn is in a situation to learn is equipped to learn right so 
that's what we meant by so we had to the child can't take agency uh, on her own so how can sarkar bazaar samaj all of us together enable agency for that child so we do all the things that we do you do you do leadership for school leadership you say let us give agency to the school leaders to enable the children in akshara we did many things to help children come back to school in those days enrollment itself was an issue in pratham books we said why if my childhood went joyfully between the pages of a book and my mother had to drag me away why can't every child in india have that joy so we said why should only publishers have the agency to publish books and why are there not enough books in india so we said are sab let's give everyone agency to be part of this uh, joy of reading mission so we opened out a platform where writers got agency to write without waiting for publishers to say this is good that is good illustrators got agency to just start illustrating books the translators got the agency to just translate other people's books editors came in we managed to distribute agency for publishing writing illustrating editing translating and the result is tens of millions of readers who suddenly freely anywhere anytime have a wonderful book to read in any language so there are some things you can do which can reverse agency it's not always easy so we are not saying everyone you better go and do it we are saying the possibility exists right let's think of how we can distribute agency gandhi ji always you can find an example he is always sitting there behind me what did he do simplest thing in the world which you all were everyone was taught in second standard or something third standard he solved what agency what he didn't make some big bhashan about agency he said the salt tax is not correct these colonial people have put a salt tax i am going to take agency back i am going to internalize the locus of control by picking up salt and holding it and say i am sorry but this unjust law doesn't work for me salt is here salt is everywhere salt is my life without salt i can't live i am only taking agency back with a fistful of salt what a beautiful way without without violent protest without any such thing you just flip with the idea of who has the agency not the colonial chap with his stick but the farmer with his fist and his fist not clenched in anger but his fist fist clenched with the life giving salt what a beautiful way to describe agency right so there are many such examples today in our more formal work in i talked of education but i have an active citizenship portfolio nandan ha works with many institutions to help government uh, do its public services better everywhere in the design of our programs and portfolios we try to see how more and more people at every level are able to better do the things they are supposed to do or want to do that is in some way distributing agency to be effective so in that sense when we talk in our societal platform thinking about restoring agency it is both a moral and a strategic imperative moral because all of us want power over our own lives our own circumstances all of us also want to reach our highest human level which is to help others right we want agency to help other people as well so that that is a moral reason for working on agency and the uh, imperative uh, the strategic imperative the strategic need to work on distributing agency is that all problems have to be solved in their context you cannot sit in america and solve problems of chennai you can't even sit in delhi and solve problems of bihar so problems have to be solved as much as possible locally by people in their context and for that you need democratic decentralized uh power the power to make change the power to be flexible the power to make small shifts the power to distribute to help more people understand complex things that impact on their life right these are all ways to restore agency and to become both more empathetic and more effective societal problems are always complex 
and especially when we live in a country as diverse as India, Rohini's argument for contextual problem solving resonates very strongly with me. It clearly makes a lot of logical sense to work towards distributing agency. But how does one exactly work towards that? Let's request Rohini to unpack this a little more for us. Uh, agency is a big word and sometimes it can be frightening and sometimes you can say where I myself don't have agency, what are we talking about restoring other people's agency. But there is, when you keep on unpacking things, there is always some way to increase agency I found. And uh, let me see, um, uh, you know, I'm in, I went uh, years ago, 97, 90, yeah, I think it was 97 um, or 2007 in Bihar in in the um, islands of the Kosi River, right in the backwaters, where the most vulnerable of India's communities, the Musahari tribal, uh, the Musahari people, they're not tribal, they live. And I went to an island by boat. And those people, honestly, I tell you, I will never forget their faces. They are not that far from the district magistrate's office. I could go there by boat going from Bangalore but almost nobody, none of the officials had bothered to go to that island. And the people there, they were suffering from all sorts of things. Poverty, yes, but neglect by the system a lot. And then, uh, as I looked, a boat came up to the, to the shore of that little island where we were, people were telling us about all their problems and how it was so hard to get access to healthcare services. And one fellow came up in a boat with a little tin box and doing ting 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 and he had come to sell ice cream in that Musa in that island in the middle of nowhere where the district magistrate told me it's very hard to go there madam it's very hard to do work we need a bridge he said we need hundreds of crores to spend on a okay not hundreds but tens to make a bridge so that administrative officials can go there and help those people while they are sitting there not taking the agency which they already have this ice cream vendor has taken the agency to make his own livelihood and make all those children happier by eating ice cream. So I'm saying in any situation, there is always a sliver, an opening where we can either take agency or help give agency. And it should be a discussion, a dialogue, a, a, a thread of hope. It should not be something that is pushed down on the heads of people who are working in this societal platform space. And we must find more and more words to describe agency so that people really understand what we are talking about. More stories, more words, more in more languages, with more metaphors, analogies, so that that word agency is unpacked for people to understand. It is just about allowing everybody to be part of the solution and not remain part of the problem. such a powerful thought. In any given situation, how do we enable more and more people to become part of the solution and not remain part of the problem? Automatically, we'll discover a way to restore agency. If we could enable and handhold people in recognizing what they already have and what can they do with what they have and actually help them do it, it would be transformative. When people taste success on doing something, they wish for more. It is human nature. And what I have understood is that agency is all about triggering this virtuous cycle of I have, I can, and I wish. Now that we have explored and understood the role that Samaj can play in restoring agency, let's talk about what happens when we bring Sarkar into the mix. Rajila, co-founder of a Chennai-based non-profit Vidya Vidai, has an interesting question. I'm working with the government structure here in Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. So uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when you're 
working with the government you understand the challenges as well as the resistance that they have but how do you uh, find a moment where you uh, you know make them realize or we say that you know there is a need for agency in the system or with the stakeholders that we are working with so that is a challenge that uh, we are trying to figure out yeah no it's a very good question rajila and i think if i go back to my old self maybe we need to ask that question differently rajila maybe see they are the government i am some citizen here coming and saying that i want to make change they are saying who are you we are so busy we have so many files yeah maybe the way to approach it is perhaps uh one is to do your research okay on that government office that you're going to you need to know what is their mandate what is, little bit at least and this is our public information you need okay. to know a little bit about that office and that officer you're going to meet don't go blind this okay. i learned after many years of going blind and not knowing anything okay so that's one so that you are you know what that poor fellow is in some sense you have placed yourself in his shoes and his responsibility then instead of saying how can you help me to give agency what what if how can uh, can you please tell me how we can help you we do abc we know this is part of your mandate how can we help you if you give a little opening to people they are more likely to respond than to if you want to force them to do something that you need especially government officers who don't like it at all yeah. but there are many good marvelously good government officers obviously who want to take the help of samaj institutions of 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 uh, uh, of capable citizens they recognize that it's a load that needs to be shared so perhaps when suppose the first time you go and you get uh, pushed back maybe you need to sit quietly and say could i have done this thing a little differently would i have got a different response right and also let me tell you even if you did all that some anonymous person walking into an office is not going to get the warmest welcome right so there has to be some proven work that has been demonstrated that that person who officer you're talking to knows of so it's a process you will get knocked back two three times but as the evidence builds up and the trust builds up you will get a good response Discouraged. Don't be discouraged if government pushes you back. <laughs> they are too busy yeah. to worry. I mean, there are so many things on their plate, right? If exactly. they do one wrong thing, they can get hauled up by hundreds of agencies. So yes. they are juggling so many things. But persistence does pay. Uh, humble persistence. Not if you go with arrogance and in a mood of act ag aggression or activism. but persistence does pay and don't go alone surely you have other people with you eight people it it makes a difference if you are seen as a group humble persistence now that's such a beautiful concept i'm sure it triggers many thoughts in our minds well here comes a follow up question from revithi who is a program director at mantra for change a bangalore based education non profit that works with multiple states on systemic education transformation let's listen yes so uh, i I'm, i'm revathi i'm uh, i work for mantra for change i work in the karnataka programs here we've been working with clusters blocks and districts in karnataka so i just had a follow up question to regila i heard what you responded to her to say that to restore agency i just feel one factor could also be or one barrier could also be the fear of restoring that agency I, uh, just as an example from ground just sdmc we know a lot of uh cases of sdmc doing really well in schools but i think this um uh fear that the sdmc might take over the schools stops uh, schools from restoring their agency so in spite of having a lot of good stories out there i think this fear is i don't know stops them from that restoring their agency in the school and within the sdmc so a oh, marvelous question on a fantastic example luckily i have a little a little experience with this so i can answer from some experience and it's a marvelous question see eventually if agency is conflated with power 
then often power is seen as a zero sum game means if you have more power i will have less right say and especially in an electoral politics that is true there is only one person who can win one political seat right so if if i get 51 votes even if you get 50 votes i will win if i have that power you cannot have that power that is what is called a zero sum game right so often agency is conflated with power and power is conflated with a zero sum ki if i give hand over agency to that one then i you have to minus agency from my side but that's not what real agency is about right in some sense we want to move from zero sum power to shared power so the i can understand the fear of say a school leader saying are if i give west sdmc so much power what about my power if they have more power i will have less power so when we frame these questions of agency we have to take a serious look at this that's why it's so difficult no others if it was like uh, distributing sweets will give everybody here's your agency here's your agency as any so it is true that sometimes if i get more agency you may get less so you have to be able to come that overcome that fear by demonstration you know in the mind if that fear is there you have you are right to give other examples but we have to acknowledge that that fear is legitimate because see it's much easier for suppose i'm a very good school leader okay and i'm really good and my students are happy my teachers are happy my infrastructure is good okay here comes an sdmc that thinks it is better and they may have reason to think they are better they are going to hold you the school leader who is already handling so many things with five more responsibilities five more accountabilities they are going to say but look at your library or they are going to say always ask the parents before doing abcd or the mla usually there is an mla or some panchayat leader who is on that sdmc he has his own political so it is a valid question to process and pass through first as as somebody who is in that process let us acknowledge the legitimacy of that fear and then let us let us try to help people to be open to experimentation he you you are worried but what if your work became easier what would in what way would you as a school leader like your work to be a little less demanding can you in fact shift some of the responsibility agency and responsibility have to go together you can't separate them so if the sdmc gets agency they also have responsibility and accountability so if you think from that framework then how can the school leader say oh thank heavens there's a sdmc now let them let, i will reduce some of my power to make decisions about maybe the library maybe the toilets maybe attendance where it could be anything then i am willing to experiment with reducing my power in some decision making things and maybe eventually it will work out better for me i'll be able to focus on other things does that work for you realty makes sense i think i think my one take away or learning is to address the power dynamics and channelize it in more for positive yes then yes thank you thank you so thank much. you realty that was a great question So now, if I can just build on uh, Rapti's point, and there's something that you touched in the initial uh, uh, part also, that uh, people who have been systematically oppressed for very long, we yes. need not start by restoring their agency at the beginning, because that they, it may not come very natural to them. We necessarily have to first work with people who are holding a lot of power or uh, authority in the system. Only when the system on the outside changes, the in behavior of people inside the system will start changing. Yes. We have to build capacities around people who are left behind, so that they can use their own capacities better. They, I mean, that whole Amartya Sen framework about development as freedom, right? Unless there is that layer of freedom around you, how what will you do, right? So, um, uh, what can we do to ensure that the circumstances around people who have been so deliberately left out could agency have different meanings to people rohit from makla jagriti an organization working in early childhood education asked an interesting question what about 
we cannot restore agency to those who are at the end of the pipeline or at the bottom of the pyramid uh, or something like that. I mean, I uh, have a slightly different view here that maybe the nature of agency that has to be restored, you know, say as depending on where a person is on maybe say the Maslow's pyramid uh, needs to be understood. Maybe it, it differs from, you know, kind of where a person uh, is and, and, the, and the context. Uh, so I think that would be uh, that would be fantastic for any one of us who is doing field work where we see different kind of stakeholders to you know study and uh, reflect upon. Ah, uh, see, this is as much a, in some sense a spiritual quest as any. Uh, if we go, there is something beyond Maslow also because Maslow's theories are a bit linear, right? You have to first have your basic needs met, blah blah blah. But in India, especially in five thousand years tradition, I mean history. Right, people have had to find their own coping mechanisms. Sometimes we should not only look at Maslow as a framework because people have Dalits, Dalit women, I mean, or you know, the lowest of the lowest among the Dalits, the scavenger community, the Musal. Even there, we have seen examples of people snatching agency in the sense I refuse to be a victim. Imagine we have seen, so you don't have to become uh, some finish all your education and have economic empowerment before you can snatch agency, not every time. Okay, that doesn't mean we may we force every Dalit woman to feel that way. But I just want to be a little careful when we use Maslow. So that we also have this shadow of that idea always parallelly. One thing that's clear is that whether it's exercising agency or restoring one's agency, it is the consequence of human interactions. Now there are many interactions that can exist and hence many unique barriers to agency will exist. How should we look at restoring agency when designing interventions at scale? It goes back again to context, right? If we can't have a cookie cutter model about restoring agency, right? As I said, it's not a biscuit that we distribute, right? So it's when you, un again, that's why we have to keep on unpacking what is agency, what is agency, right? So in this case, if it's only about SDMCs, then as I said, working through the teacher's fears, working through the SDMCs need to grab power. You might have to do different negotiations at a different level. So main thing to remember is even if you're doing agency at scale, it's one context at a time. It's not like the same thing into 100 million. So that's why agency, the word is complex and we cannot just uh, expect to scale it in a cookie cutter way. That's when we talk about scale, it's impossible to not invite thoughts from Sanjay Parohit, the chief curator of societal platform thinking and a strategic advisor to Siksha Lokam. Let's hear his perspectives on this question of designing for agency at scale. Yeah, thank you for that, Rohini. I just wanted to, that's, that's a great perspective that context matters a lot. And in the context of platforms, where that is where all of you have been spending time, the purpose of a platform is to do one thing very interesting, often overlooked. When agency meets structure, so when you restore the agency of people, they will meet structure because structure is designed in a certain way, which has a role also to play in the agency of the, of the ecosystem, uh, not consciously, but maybe sometimes unconsciously. And what Rohin talked about system barriers, these are, these are structures. So when agency and structure will collide, it will cause overflow. Like Rohi talked about, if you get a sense of what you have and that translates into what you can do and then you start wishing for new things, wish is an overflow. If you are all coming together to build platforms, the objective of that platform is to capture that overflow. Mm. Build it into a new capacity. Because the structure is resisting the agency because the structure does not have the capacity to handle that agency. If everybody wants something, it doesn't mean people are providing it. Not that they don't want to, it may not be incapable of doing it. So then our job becomes to say, how do we infrastructure it and put it back into the hands of the structure so that the structure can respond to the agency at the speed at which you're invoking the agency. 
and that is we have to be careful with activist mindsets because you invoke agency faster than the structure's ability to solve it. Mm-hmm. Fighting. That's not the intent. And so this this task is that go back into interaction design, keep designing again, and that's why platforms evolvability. The reason why you should be constantly iterating is because agency will get restored. It will cause overflows. Our job is capture that overflow, build new capacity, give it back to structure, and create this virtuous cycle. So that, that structure and agency become mutually reinforcing rather than they become opposing forces. I hope that helps. Lovely. Uh, I really like that, Sanjay. So uh, that this this whole thing is about continuous creativity. That you you have to you have to uh, occupy the possibilities. Like he calls it overflow, right? Um, that somewhere that that hope for more agency is floating around. You have to occupy that possibility of that agency and put it back inside that structure, put it back inside that structure to fall out again, put it back. It, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of a nice uh, image to have. We have been having this discussion to understand and unpack the layers around the word agency and it has been captivating. Before we conclude, there's an intriguing question that Chandni has. Like Newton's third law states that every action has a reaction. Are there unintended consequences of restoring agency that we should be aware of? Let's hear from Chandni who leads the program design team at Mantra for Change. So we discussed about how while demonstrating agency, we should be cautious of how we don't take away others agency. And we also discussed about how uh, even though there are 100 problems, we should also keep thinking about with what I have, what is some problem that I can solve now. And that's where agency like begins to develop. But so one thing we do regarding the first sentence, the demonstrating while demonstrating agency, we should be cautious of not taking others agency. One thing I have seen is when celebrating uh, champion leaders in the system who demonstrate agency already, what happens is others in the system, like especially their peers or people who work with closely, they feel threatened that their agency is being snatched or uh, feel like the system is being unfair towards them. While Mm. these champions who are demonstrating agency are being celebrated by uh, their peers or by higher officials. So in that case, what, how do we design? Because we know that celebrating agency is important, but how do we se- keep celebrating it or recognizing it yeah. in such a way that others don't feel threatened? It's a good question, actually. You know, I've always observed there's this award culture, you know, like we are very happy to quickly give awards to lots of people. <laughs> but the person who gives the award feels very good. Okay, because see what I did, I gave awards, I recognize people. But and the, sometimes the people who are recognized also feel good. But, uh, you know, uh, again, context matters. Jealousy is a very powerful force in the human uh, uh, experience. Right? So now two of your teachers and one teacher is getting called out. I mean, most awards are done in such a way that eventually everybody gets an award, which is good. But you are very right. And there I'll unpack it to say, I and mean, see, if somebody else is giving the award, you can't do anything. You'll have to only handle the overflow of jealousy or the feeling that why have I not been selected if you're working with teachers, for example, or school leaders. But I think it matters what kind of agency is rewarded and awarded. If it is the kind of agency that we were worried about, where somebody else is feeling threatened because this person got agency, then it's the wrong agency to celebrate, isn't it? So, and usually if you give awards to a teacher or a school leader who has allowed other people to feel part of the growth, you will find that everybody is so happy that that person got awarded. They will genuinely go and say, at last you got recognized, I'm so happy, let's celebrate. But if they feel this somebody's pet has got given an award of some kind, then, then that is not really for agency distribution, but for agency capture, then there will be resentment. So if you are in the uh, business of designing such recognition and awards, be careful or, or reshape the recognition so that it is not the people at the top 
who already had agency and perhaps have refined it, but people who may not have had agency and got it, um, maybe we have to restructure whom we are calling out, right? Always keeping in mind that people will feel jealous. People, uh, people need to look up to people who are awarded, no, not want to tear them down. So. Thank you. Two takeaways I'm taking from here is uh, think of who and what is being rewarded. And uh, one more is who is rewarding. Like it shouldn't be just the top or higher officials rewarding. There should be space for peers also to wish. Yeah. Clearly, through our discussions today, we have established that to solve societal challenges at scale, it is important that we consciously design for restoring agency. Will there be challenges? Will there be barriers? Certainly, yes. But there will also be creative ways available to us to overcome those. Hope today's interaction with Rohini helped you understand the concept of agency better. Thank you so much for joining us on the Celebration Podcast. I leave you with this thought-provoking note and invitation for action from our wonderful, passionate and super inspirational thought leader, Rohini. So with that, I'll close and I'll say this before I close. First of all, thank you for giving me so much time. All of you, thank you for being yourselves. Uh, look, all of you, all of us are in the education space and our children in this country, 150, 60 million young people have lost two years of education opportunity. Okay. It's a national tragedy and it can become an opportunity because we all know things go quite wrong with our education system anyway so we don't want to restore it to that so it, while it's a creative opportunity let's acknowledge the tragedy and we are all here we are feeling so frustrated but uh, you've seen the jack-in-the-box no Where inside the spring is like coil now the when the thing opens bujunk, the jack-in-the-box is going to come out okay all the student energy, aspirations, the meeting each other, all that is going to come out. You be there to witness and to help change that energy into positive energy. You make now so much thinking we are doing, so much experience you have. You convert all that boing boing of that spring into agency. Figure out ways to do that. My niece is a teacher. She went back to school in America after one year. In that one year, this one child, Daniel, didn't say a word. Not one word for one year in the virtual classes. She met him one month ago and he, he still hasn't talked, stopped talking, I think. She has to actually put tape on him and say, bas ho gaya. So that coiled energy is going to come out. How can together we who care so much for the education space and for shiksha and lokam, how can we harness that spring energy? Yeah, dwell on that, meditate on that. Thank you for this opportunity. All the best to you.